you don't produce more, you're not, you're not going to stay. Now, that tough love, taking the time to help and, and point out and show them the, the areas that they are not thriving, I'm doing them a huge favor. So women, women I, think, I, I think more than anything, it's that they are afraid to be tough. Don't be afraid to be tough. Have you ever seen some of these social experiments where, you know, there's this one guy, I can't remember what his name is, but he's like a famous YouTuber and on college campus, I think it was UCLA, he'd walk up to women and do his little spoof, right, his little funny spoof. And the women were always so nice. Like one, one time he, he dressed up like as a total nerd. And he's this big intimidating guy. But he dressed up as a nerd, really bad clothes, you know, pulled up to his belly button and, the, you know, the black glasses and, and he, maybe even a tape, you know, around the glasses. And he'd walk up to women, hi, can I have your phone number? <laughs> and women were so nice, 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 90% of them, nice, 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 nice. Some of them would plug their real phone numbers in his phone. Uh-huh. Women need to, instead of, you know, with the women's movement right now, instead of always blaming men, what we need to do is not be afraid to confront them. Yeah, you know, if this guy comes up to me, no, I'm not going to give you my freaking number. Back right. off. Right. Get out of my face, yo. Right. W- women are afraid to own their power. So, so there, I think what's going on right now, you know, is... You're seeing some of that. But I think that the thing that we need to, to be aware of is, is we don't want to blame men for, for being, you know, they're, they're, they, have these, they have these real, like, physical responses, right? And they act on those physical responses. You're attractive. Oh, my God, hi. You know? And they can be pretty obnoxious. And they can, they can you know, they can cross lines. And I'm not saying that that's good or, or making excuses for them. I'm just saying instead of trying to silence them or take away their masculine impulses so that they're so paranoid that, that they don't want to, you know, talk to anybody ever again, maybe what we should do as women is focus mostly on ourselves. How would I handle that? Yeah, I don't like guys whist- whistling at me, you know. But sometimes I just wave at him and I smile. You know, sometimes I'll flip them off. Sometimes I'll be like, dude, you know, knock it off. But, but we as women need to at least be okay with confrontation. I, I agree not with that. Not a bad that. thing. No, it's not. And that's the thing that I mean. We are evolving. That's exactly what I mean. Because there was a time when we didn't have to worry about that. Where we didn't, where, mm. I mean, it was many, many years ago, I probably hundreds of years ago, where we just lived in our little dwelling and only saw people from our village, and there was very little, if any, confrontation. But we are evolving now to where we have to protect ourselves and not rely on somebody else to protect us. That's, that was my point. Yeah, yeah. And, and the same, I, I'm a real big believer in women making their own money. And Right, yeah. You know, I was married for 20 years. And with him for about 25. And when we divorced, I, my dad was going to give me his, uh, his bar. Okay. His, his, he had a billiard, had like 14, 15 um, pool tables in it. Right. A nice place. And I uh, got into a relationship with a woman. And my dad disowned me. And the bar option was gone. Because he didn't like it. Here I was. I'm sorry? Because he didn't like the path you were choosing. That's conditional love. Yeah. Most people do have conditional love. Mm -hmm. If, If you are of a different political persuasion, I don't love you. If you think differently than I do, I don't love you. If you have a different religion than me, I don't love you. 
So most people are, don't have condition, you know, are not unconditional in their love. Almost everybody. Kind of a sad fact, but it, it, to be, you know, we just sort of need to be aware of that, that once you disagree with people, they're really not going to like you anymore in a lot of cases, you know. And you have to be strong. And you have to, you have to know that that's okay. You, you can speak your mind, but, but also don't, don't be one of those people that, that judge others mm-hmm. and, you know, decide not to like somebody just because of their belief system. You know, I, I, I just don't do that. So, yeah, my dad pulled the bar and I was left with, oh, my God, how do I support myself? And I have been helping women forever. I, I, I'm a natural decorator. You know, I've been helping women with their wardrobes. Um, showing them how to eat and take care of themselves, how to mentally become strong. You know, I was a mortgage broker person, so, you know, I I knew the financial world. And, um, you know, I'm like, damn, okay, I guess I'm turning my hobby into a business. And so that's when I started doing this one-on-one with women. You know, I'd go into their home and help them one-on-one. I'd help them organize their bills help them, you know, go through their closets and sweat, like sweat working beside them and see tears and all the worries. One of my clients called me um, her Valium. <laughs> she said, when I came, it was like all was right with the world. You know, Nikki was her Valium. So, but we as women, all those hobbies, those things that come naturally, those things that we enjoy, we need to monetize. And we need to be smart and we need to look after ourselves. And I don't care if you're in the happiest of happiest marriages, you need to get an income source coming in. It's imperative. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. So um, let's change the subject a little bit now and uh, get into the astrology side of you. Ha <laughs> ha. I love astrology. <laughs> astrology is like taking the spiritual temperature of the day or the spiritual temperature of a person. Mm. So you're, you're a Scorpio. Mm-hmm. Your son is in Scorpio. Now, you don't know your, your birth time. And the moon changed signs the, the day that you were born. Mm. So you might have a Libra moon. Or you might have a Scorpio moon. Hmm. So we don't know. If you can find that out, it'd be good. But you can probably figure that out on your own. I recommend that everybody look up their birth chart. And you can do this for free. You can do this for free. I talk about astrology on our YouTube channel, Spies Girls YouTube channel, S-P-I-E-S, Girls. Or you can just look up Mickey, M-I-K-I, Spies. Uh, but, it, you know, you want to be careful because there's a lot of people talking about astrology that don't really know astrology. They're just repeating the rhetoric that they hear from other, quote-unquote, astrologers. And they don't know the science of astrology. And the, the science of astrology is really simple. It's based on the seasons. So astrology is, is like, astrology is psychology, You know, when people talk about depression or bipolar or narcissistic personality, it's just a mixture of astrology. That's all it is. There's no diagnosis as far as mental, these mental things. It's all astrology. (laughs) So when you're born, the day that you were born, dear one, Mm -hmm. the sun was in Scorpio. And so the climate of the day was Scorpio. It, it, it felt very Scorpio. You're, you're in the middle of uh, fall, right? The sun is falling down. Mm-hmm. You have the uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. Isn't that very fitting? Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, I was born during Leo season. The sun was in Leo. I'm very much a Leo. I have the, the, the spice of the Leo. And the moon, the day that I was born, was in Aries. 
Aries is a very masculine, uh, um, take charge energy. So your moon, if it was in Libra, you're a, a balanced person. You like to see both sides of things. You're obsessed with seeing both sides of things. I, that's what and you're not going to take sides. Is that's that you? What, yep, yep, that's exactly Okay. Me. Then you have a Libra moon because that's, that's a very, that's really, you have another Libra placement, but the moon is the most telling side of you. That's your emotional life. And the, the, the nice thing about your chart is you have that sun in Scorpio. Well, you also have Mercury in Scorpio. Hmm. So you communicate from that very watery, deep space. You know, you want to uncover all of the hidden gems in a person. Hmm. And you want deep relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you want the sexually charged, you know, um, romance, and you want to kind of own the person. Mm. You know, you want you want them to be obsessed with you, and you want to be obsessed with them. But the moon in Libra makes you a little bit um, less emotional. Where most Scorpios are going to be super, super emotional. The Libra moon position is going to give you a more balanced approach where you're going to be more logical versus just emotional. So you have a, you have a real emotional and logical side. You have both. That'll really benefit a person. So, so the astrology is based on the seasons. You have the ecliptic. And then you have the um, you have the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, and then you have the sine wave. So at the top of the sine wave is Cancer. This is the summer solstice, and then you hit that that um, um, ecliptic, and that's where you're you're falling into fall. Okay, that happens on. Um, September 21st, and um, you go down into the fall and the winter, and that Tropic of Capricorn, that's the, that's the winter solstice. So you, you have these cycles of, of and, and I can ex- it's hard to explain it over the phone, but um, if people just understand that you're born into a season, you know, you're, if you're Aries, that's, the sun is exalted there. The sun loves it when it's spring. Sun loves being in the fire sign. And then you're born, and all of, the, all of the positions of the planet, they were somewhere. And it's like when you took your first breath, this was your spiritual stamp, the blueprint of your life. Mm. And so when you learn and see how it all goes together and how you were positioned, it, astrology is the, the code of the universe. This is a, we're living in this, this um, almost like a, a video game type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's this, it's this energetic, you know, your, your body's not even real. You're mostly space. Mm-hmm. So the, the, this is over some people's heads and some people might be like, ah, <laughs> but, but basically the planets are like the timekeeper of this universe and they all have an energy. They all have a personality and they all leave a blueprint or a mark and you have a spiritual tattoo and that's your birth chart. So I, I highly recommend if you really want to understand yourself to all of you that are listening, you really want to understand yourself. Just Google birth chart, Western astrology, free birth chart, and you can get that pretty much anywhere. Or you can reach out to me, and I'll be happy to direct you and show you where to go. So, yeah, astrology is really quite beautiful. When you understand astrology, there's there's not this... um, you know, where, where you're judging other people.